right, all right, all right, class. Oh my gosh. I'll tell you what. All right, you two separate. I don't want to hear it anymore. Tell you what, let's have you out in the hallway. And it's not my first time on the hallway. There's a big surprise. Holy sugar. I don't know why this isn't coming up, but uh, maybe it just, maybe it will come up now. I don't know what, it's, what it thinks it's doing. Oh my gosh. That'll really suck. So most of the thing that we did on the, on the Delta 8 is we came up with this as a, as a, um, as a uh, subject because there was more and more people looking at the Delta 8, more people thinking about what they have to do. And so, so oh, look at that. And so, um, and I don't watch my password. No, I'm not. This is just me normal. I'm sober for 11 years. Can you imagine what I was like 11 years ago? No, I don't remember, but I remember sometime in the 90s, I was, they said, you had fun. They said I had fun. So we, we put this together because there was so much interest in what do we have to do for, for Delta 8. It was, oh, this is, what the heck? This is really. Fun. What the hey? Hmm? Okay. Ready? All right, here we go. Four more No, nothing. Do you have it on a stick? I still have that laptop here with me. Well, I don't have it on a stick, but it, it worked 10 minutes ago, and now it's deciding to be funky. I didn't have to speak that loud. But um, so we put this session together because we're also thinking about having a, a full conference on, on Delta 8 or or I'll call it the uh, CBD and, and the miners. And so we thought through that process, and then how do you, how do you justify what's happening in Delta 8? What do you, you know, what's the next plan that go forward? So I call it a walk in the woods, just because I enjoy myself so much that I appreciate it if you at least smile, that would, that would make me feel better. Okay, you can't see with the mask, that's right. So as, as I go back through, we're looking at cannabis versus, uh, or hemp versus marijuana and all the different terms that have been used and everything that's been set out there and you start to look at high CBD versus high THC and you have class one, class two and different people are trying to set up different classifications and how do we work through it. Then we had something we called recreational marijuana, just like we have recreational beer, <laughs> recreational wine, you know, same sort of thing. Then you had medical marijuana and just like you have medical aspirin and regular aspirin and so all those things are, make absolutely no sense. And then you have fiber and you have oil and you have the different parts and now you have industrial hemp versus you know, industrial roses versus regular roses, I don't know. And so the nomenclature's gotten all messed up and so that's why we wanted to put a, a short session together and to find out more about what we have for Delta 8. Now when the when they, USDA started coming out and saying that you know, you had to have things that have to be from cannabis and that's where you're going to have all the process and you're allowed to do those. And, and the first thing I thought was, you, you can't stop stupid, but you can muffle it for a while with duct tape. And one of the things is, is that as you're going back through, these are actually the compounds that you have. You have CBDA, right, a CBGA, and then you have CBDA synthase, you have THCA synthase, and the other one that's not here is CBC A synthase, and that's how you do the biosynthesis of those molecules. And you, same thing for the V's and all the other stuff. But, but when you go from CBDA to CBD, that's, this is not in the plant. So if you start to go the rule of the law versus the spirit of the law, you're, this is not in the plant. This is a degradation product, right? Same thing with CBN as a degradation product. And so Delta-8 can be, under certain conditions, a degradation product. So are they going to allow degradation products? We don't know. 
chemistry that it's going to work out well. So remembering Breaking Bad, he was a PhD synthetic chemist, so I'm a PhD synthetic chemist. The man in front is a PhD synthetic chemist, and so synthetic chemists are the best chemists in the world. And the reason we're the best chemists in the world is because we have to make this stuff. <laughs> yes. And the second best chemist, there isn't one. And so if you go back through, you look at that process because we know how to make these molecules. We look at these things, and I don't know about you, but around age 23, I started to see organic molecules in 3D. I, I see them in 3D. I don't see flat molecules. You guys look at this go and go, what's all the lines? What's all the zeros? And so for me, though, I see it in 3D. So the first thing as an organic chemist that we look at this bond right here and we go, that's going to close up in like a millisecond. This thing does not want to be here. So as we look at that process, you have CBD, you know, closing right up to THC. And there's it's very few kilojoules per, per mole, which means it, it takes very little energy to go over. And the reason it takes very little energy to go over, so I'm going to assume that you, you all can see in 3D also, because now, because I told you, you're all now organic chemists. <laughs> So what happens is this oxygen has a couple electrons over it, and if you build a model, this oxygen is sitting right over this double bond. So it's, it's not sitting over here, it's sitting on top of it, and it's going to close up very, very quickly. And so that's what happens, and that's why it goes right to THC. This one gets more double bonds, and it starts to close up. Then you ask yourself, well, why do you call delta-8 versus delta-9? If they're both THC, why do I have one? It's not like it's a nickname. Okay, so you look at this, and the way we, we think in organic chemistry, let's see if I press the right button. There's a funny story about that one, but I won't go into it. So this over here is delta-9, and the reason we name it that way is because we count the carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, six A. That's an exception. Seven, eight, nine, ten, ten A. And now we have the 11 up here. This is a, a methyl group up here. So when we're doing this, we're counting that, and that's why it's called delta-9 THC. Over here, that's the 8 carbon. That's delta-8. Now you're all organic chemists. Did that make sense? Did it clear up anything? Yeah. Well, so if we're looking at that, the change here is where this double bond is, and the change over to here is this double bond. It's like one of those Sunday puzzles where what's the, what's the six things that are different between these two things, and it's usually a leg that's moved a little bit out. Now you see the double bond. Nine, eight. This molecule over here, if you see it in 3D like I do, another story about seeing dead people in elevators, this oxygen over here sits on top of that double bond, very close to it. This is, kind of, this is a very flat molecule over here. This oxygen sits on top. It has lots of electrons all over it, and it goes through a, a, a quick stage of a quick cycle, you know, makes a little uh, six-membered ring, and then it comes over. And then what happens is then this forms over here. This is very stable. It's nowhere near that oxygen. There's no way that this molecule is going back to this one. It's very, very happy over here. It's far enough away. If you make a model, you can feel the strain in the plastic of the model. And when it goes over to here and you make the same model, it's not strained. It's happy. Okay? So that's where the difference is. Now that's why you're going to make delta-8 very, very quickly. So now when you start to say, okay, now I got CBD. So CBD is going to go right to delta-9 because we saw how that happened, right? A little bit of acid and it goes right over because it needs a little bit of acid to go through. You can make delta-9 over here, and you can make it anhydrous, which means no water, no water. You've completely taken out the water, and you can burn it. You can burn it, and it won't do anything. You take one drop of water, whoop, it goes right over to here. And that's what happens is you need a little bit of water. That's what provides you your oxygen and your electrons. So that's the whole thing of how can you make this stuff, and how can anyone do it? I can do it in my kitchen. I have done it in my kitchen. And so what happens is I took some, I took some hemp seeds. I saw a work that was done out of, out of Ottawa. Um, oh, gosh, it begins with G. Outside of the, I'm going to come up with it. 
But I, I saw that there was a work out of, out of um, Canada that they took all these different hemp seeds and they, and they made Delta 9. And I thought, well, that's crazy. So I went to Whole Foods, got myself some, some hemp seeds and got myself some Everclear alcohol, right? Just like anyone else out in, in uh, Humboldt County. And so I got that and then I put it in and I made a little flambe and I didn't burn the kitchen. I was very pleased because I was very close to burning the kitchen. I went downstairs and I analyzed it in my lab. Breaking Bad coming to mind. And so you go back through. You can make Delta 9 out of, out of hemp seed because there, there's some CBD in there. Just a tip and trick in case you want to move back to Humboldt <laughs> County. Now, if you look at this, this is, there's a, a number of different molecules that, that are made by organic chemists. Um, John Hoffman's one, Alexandros uh, Macrionis at BU is another one. So when you look at molecules and you see some of the literature and you see JW or you say AM and some dash and some number, that's made by organic chemists. We make these things because we, we take a molecule from natural products and then we add things to it so it's more amenable to the body. Okay, so you add a phosphorus or you add a nitrogen. That's what medicinal chemists do in all the laboratories. And so they take natural products and then they try and take that molecule and they try and make it more amenable to come into the body of where they want it to be. And so these are some... ...writing a whole lot of things because we're not that smart. Well, I'm not that smart. And so you take an R and then you say, this is what I'm going to put here. So with R equal to N5H11, this really is, um, this is delta 8 because that's what that carbon chain looks out here. So if I put another R out here and I have this type of group and this type of group and this type of group, each one of these is going to have a different part of the molecule. So that's the other part that you a point eventually. <laughs> so it's amenable to the body. So now it goes in and each one will go to a CB1 site and it will change that protein in a different manner. Activate 50% of, of a protein in there. So like the CB1 site, receptor site. So th some of these molecules here, even though they look very similar to, to Delta-8, than uh, Delta-8 itself, or even del or Delta-9, sorry, it's to Delta-9. That means that one molecule versus 100 molecules of Delta-9 would give the same effect. Letting that sink in for a bit. <laughs> one molecule versus 100 molecules. Because we think in molecules, right? Well, moles a lot, so I'm just going to do a molecule. <laughs> so if I go back, because if I do moles, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be into gophers and stuff. And so if I go, <laughs> if I go back through and I, and I talk about that, now that's the scary part of the delta-8. So it's not so much the delta-8 itself is a scary molecule or what will it do? Delta-8 by itself is three to 10 times, according to the literature, less active than Delta-9 as Delta-8. But the minute something else happens and you break that group or you break another bond or something else is a degradation product, that's where, you, that's where the US government's gonna start to say, wait a minute, what's, what's happening? because some people have a very strong effect with the delta-8, and it's not the delta-8, it's all the other little things that are along the baseline. Daffodils. Daffodils, so you say, well, how can a plant do that? Well, daffodils, if you take daffodils and you put them in the same uh, um, vase with tulips, it will kill a tulip. If you put it in the same vase with a rose, it will kill a rose. But if you put it in the same vase with an iris, an iris will last 10 times longer. And why is that? It's because there's different effects of these things. So these plants are, 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 com are, are different. So this molecule up here, I forget, it's, oh, it's called a nar narcrystalline, sort of like it's narcissistic. 
And so it goes back through, and what it does is it actually, it actually kills you know, the things in the tulip, where on the other side, it will kill a rose because it's, it has sugar and it will clog up the rose's you know, orifices and it doesn't get any water. So all these things can happen, and then these are all the compounds that you know, El Sholi um, has gone back through and, and, and categorized. He's out of Mississippi. You go back through and you have all these different molecules. And when people talk about, back, when people talk about Delta-9 or Delta-8, with Delta-9 you have, or even CBD, you have seven CBDs, seven isomers of CBD. Same molecular weight, different changes that are happening. And so that's the thing is you have seven. There's not just one. The one that the plant makes is, is the one that's the strongest, but you can have different isomers. So when the U.S. government comes around, it's going to want to know what are all the different isomers. When you look at Delta-9, it has nine isomers. Delta-8 has two because it's much more, it's closed off to the side. You have less stereochemistry that can happen. But all these other things are in there. You have all these classes over here and all the different compounds. Now, if you look at what's called cannabis and synthetic cannabinoids, now you're getting into the definition of of, of esoteric along the way, and that is here's your delta-9. And then what you can do is you can synthesize it. That's what we do for a living. We synthesize things. And you can have different classes of synthetization. You can, they call it classical, and then they have amino alcohol, and then they have a non-classical. So this is what all the organic chemists do is they're going to take this molecule and try to make it more amenable. People aren't suffering for CBD. Noramco out of Atlanta is making kilotons of this damn stuff. Albany's making, Albany Molecular Research, they're making lots of this stuff. The, the CBD molecule is not hard to make, you know, in, in, in kilotons, for gosh sakes. So that's, that's one thing to be aware of. But that doesn't mean that it's a good product for the entourage effect and such, it just means that they can make that molecule over and over and over again. They're not going to be making these other ones. So now all these things can be very changed. So that's what I was talking about. If you have a little bit of a change in this one, it can be a hundred times more sensitive. So now you have CBD and you open up the box. For those of you don't, that probably most of you are too young to know, where's Waldo? You don't know where's Waldo? Oh, you do? Oh, good. So you're older than you look. So if you go back through, you have all the other things that happen out here, and that's, a, a, this is where's Waldo? And that's, that's what you look at for this plant. You've got so many things going on in that plant, and then where's Waldo? You're trying to find the molecule that actually is safe out there. So this is a, this is a chromatogram. So this is um, absorbent, so that's how much um, you're able to see of a molecule. Let's, I'll make it easy and just say these are the number of molecules. So if I had a whole list of M&Ms, if I had a whole thing of M&Ms, uh, these would be the these would be the red M&Ms and these would be the, the green M&Ms. And so all I do is I, is I add up all my M&Ms, okay? That's as clever as it gets. And so what happens though is as they're working through the process, they separate each other because the red M&M isn't a blue M&M. Did I say red or green? Green. Okay, green and red. All right, got to stick with it. And so if I go with the green and the red, I'm going to have, I'm going to have those M&Ms. And so this one here allows me to look at this. This is actually, and then what I can do is I can look at a, you know, I can separate them. This is a standard, so this is uh, nine and, and this is, is eight. So that's UV. You can see there's other peaks that are around, there's other components that are in there, but I'm not, I'm not looking at those. I'm concerned about these two. These two over here, I'll just call them, because I know what they are anyhow, but I'm, I'm not gonna tell you. And so if I go back over here, this is nine and this is eight. Okay, so you can separate them by, by uh, the standards and know where they are. We'll call these UNK unknown okay so they're unknown as far as what we know right now right then i can go to something called mass spectrometry and i can i can know the molecular weight of them and so because these are isomers they have the same exact molecular weight 315.3 these are uh i think this is esi positive so it's really 314 you add one proton so call it 315 and so these molecules according to this type of analysis they're the exact same weight that's going to make it really hard to separate and understand what they are. You need a higher end mass spectrometer to really look at the detail. So if I look at these, you can see again the, uh, the standards. This is the UV, so this is UV light. So because they're so similar, there's nine, there's eight. 
So that's a UV spectra, so you can see absorbance of something like a mass spectrometer, except this is the full UV scan between, you know, wavelengths, which has gone over everyone's head. But trust me on this one, how do you know when a marketing guy is lying? <laughs> His lips are moving. So this is the 8 and 9. So these two are so similar that this isn't going to be a distinction either. Am I good? I didn't see it either. So if I go back through, because my glasses fade, and then I look at the screen, and I just start pulling. So if I go back through, that's exactly what, oh, go back. So these are going to be very hard to distinguish based on mass, and it's very hard to distinguish based on absorbance of UV. So now what you have is this is a paper that came out, <laughs> which is clever enough, came out this week. And so this is all the different work that's been done. So now they're taking a, a, a much higher end mass spectrometer and being able to get greater and greater information. But as you're moving to that, you can see that the top one is standard, so those are known amounts that we have, and we can see where they come out. And then we see down here the uh, 8 and the 9. So now what you're doing is you're seeing more and more high-end instruments to be able to, to, to prepare ourselves for looking for delta 8. This is a slide. I always put this up. It says, warning, this is meant to be a joke. Because it is a joke. And then what happens is people come up and ask me to, to, to buy one, and I'm just like, I'm sorry, it was a joke, and then I feel really bad, so I do this first. You know, and then I, that way they don't feel bad. So this is a, an automated botanical concentrator, easy as ABC. And you just set it for what you want. And so you can, you can get the plant, and you can have the other part, and you can be able to have this. The other part is, is, is what we're trying to get, and it's you know, more of the same thing with the uh, Jerry Lewis, and that is the crystal ball. But now you have all the other stuff that you guys are thinking about, so might as well just express them so that you'll, you'll actually be able to talk. Number one, I didn't like high school. I didn't like science in high school. There's no reason for me to believe that trend is going to change today. Okay? I know that. Some of you just don't want to do any chemistry. Then I have other people in the room that know a whole lot about chemistry, and they're just wondering, why is anyone you know, taking up the air and asking stupid questions? And I know it's a stupid question. The only thing I've ever heard from a stupid question is that I, I, said I, I taught pre-med students. They have the most stupid questions on the entire planet, and later they're going to be taking out my gallbladder. And then the other one is, I don't know anything about extraction. What is the best extraction? So looking through all those works, this is actually the core part of what happens when you're taking the hemp plant and you're doing anything with that hemp plant. Because most of the stuff that's happening out there is they're taking the hemp, they're taking pure CBD, and then they're making Delta-8. And that's how you have to make Delta-8. You can't, there is nothing from the plant that's gonna come from Delta-8. You have to make it. You have to make it. So I'm gonna take a breath and see if there's a question. Absolutely, and the videotape. It'll be on the website. It'll be on the website, and you'll have the whole videotape. So I, I came in midway through because I went to the wrong room, so I apologize for being late. Uh, but this is probably one of the stupid questions. But no, what, it's what there. I, told, I know. And I'm not going to take out your gallbladder later. So don't. <laughs> Are you pre-med? Not at all. There you go. <laughs> then I'm comfortable. All delta-8 is the same. It is, a, it is a molecule, and that delta-8 is the same. Okay, so I saw a slide on Oh, on the isomers. The yeah. There's yeah. two. There's two isomers of delta-8, but the plant doesn't make it, and it's going to be harder for you to make it, but it's actually the, the, the position of the two hydrogens. Yeah. So they can go like this, and they can be trans, or they can go like that and be trans. One does nothing. Oh, so there is one that is better. <laughs> <laughs> one does nothing. It has no activity in the brain. The, 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 the proteins in the brain are very specific. So I'll make sure I get to that. So ibuprofen, when you take ibuprofen and you take 200 milligrams, you're actually taking 400 milligrams of ibuprofen. The government has allowed a mixture of ibuprofen from two different you know, isomers, one does nothing, and the other one does what you're wanting it to do as far as reduce pain. You're taking, and the U.S. government's fine with that. 
um, when you take a, a sleeping pill of, I've forgotten the name of the one that was um, with, the, with the butterfly, Ambien. And, <laughs> thank you. and so when you take Ambien, Ambien is a very specific isomer, and that's why they charge billions of dollars and why a Japanese company bought this little company in Marlboro, Massachusetts for billions of dollars because it's very specific on how they did it. So it would be very hard to make There is. Um, is that something that we need to be aware of? Does it affect the product? What's the difference in quality? Yes. So people bought off of Craigslist for like $1,000, $1,500. And I will describe some of them the following. And that is you take some CBD. You take ethanol, you make sure it's uh, dehydrogen, uh, uh, dry, anhydrous, so you try and take out all the Not a word for chemists. And so then you go back through and you, 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 you have a certain amount that you put in and then you take three molar HCl, you add the three molar HCl, which is an acid, it's a strong acid, and then from there you stir it for a while. A while is not a number, just in case we're all confused. <laughs> and so you stir it for a while, and then, and then after that, when you think it's done, you, you take baking soda, and you add baking soda to water until the baking soda does not go into the water anymore. That's called a supersaturated solution of uh, bicarbonate. And then you put it, you drip it in, but you drip it in slowly because you, you don't want to foam too fast. And after that, you, when it stops foaming, then you and then you, uh, you quench it with water a couple times, and then you put it in, in pentane, and then you that if you analyze it, unknown. It's just because organic chemistry doesn't go from A to B going to C. It goes to A plus B plus C plus D plus, you know, just pick out a letter across the Excel spreadsheet, and that's what it goes to. So there are a number of different ways, but there's true chemists out there with real methods that can make um, pure delta-8 and separate it and purify it. So are there particular, like if we were going to market and we wanted to ask intelligent questions, you want to see their certificate of analysis and you want to see that it's 99.9 .9 delta-8. If there's anything else in there, you don't want to do anything with it. So most of the time when I'm seeing chemists, I'll see chemists and they'll go, not chem well, um, in the industry chemists. And so what they'll do is they'll say, oh, I got this great stuff. I've got 80%, you know, delta-8. Well, first of all, they probably don't, but because they haven't got a, a liquid chromatograph to actually measure it, so they believe it is. And then I'll say, what's the other 20%? It doesn't matter, man. It's, it's 80% delta-8. It doesn't matter. I'm just like, yes, it does. No, oh, man, it's delta-8. And, and you're getting a lot of money for it. You're, you're, taking, you're buying pure CBD for $30, $350 a kilo, and you're selling it for $300, I mean for $3,500 a kilo. That's, that's the incentive. Your incentive doesn't seem like the same. Your incentive seems a mode of a, prime, a product that's safe for people. And that's not the motive of everything that's out there. That's the question to ask. I want to see a COA where I can see that the Delta-8 is just Delta-8. That's what you want. Go ahead. Delta-8 is Delta-8. It's not going to go, it's never going to go to Delta-9. That, that, sh that ship's not coming back in. <laughs> well, I didn't know because it was so no. similar, but 
it's similar, but it won't go in that direction because you have an energy of, so the quick thing is you have a, a very large mountain and you have to go over that energy of activation. So you do the kinetics and it comes down and then it goes back up again. It's not, it can't go back up that mountain. It's, that double bond is not going back over to the other side. Go for it. You're going to answer it. Well, we don't know for sure, but probably when they get through with all this election crap. Go. That's what I tell people. <laughs> that's what I tell them. Like, listen, right now, everything on the election is kind of taking friends. We probably got 60 days for sure, and then a 50-50 shot for the rest of the year, right. and probably 10% that we'll have it next year. Next year. That's my uh, that's un uneducated guess. I'm buying, like, large bulk. I'm buying, you know, to, to kind of go with what we got, because like you say, if something happens and they come in and say, hey, you can't sell it. And, like, I, and the other question is, are they going to come in and say, okay, you can't sell it immediately, or, or you, you can't period. sell it in 60 days, or right. whatever. The next month or yeah. whatever. So when you know that answer, I think getting the lottery number is faster, right. easier than that answer. <laughs> Oh, I, I had you. I had you next. I'm sorry. So my question was, I think you said that Delta Eight is not originally found in the Himalayas. I have not found any evidence of Delta Eight A synthase on any. I've been looking and looking and looking. So because it's not originally in the plant, it's not an isomer of the Himalayan, and that's why it might not be covered by. Definitely not the DEA. So if you look at that, under the same thought process, CBN would also not be a product available. Right. What, what time do I have to stop? OK. All right. I just saw him in the back of the room, and I started to get anxious. Oh, no, no, that's no. It's, so yeah, so if, if you take that criteria and you look at the letter that went out, that's when they went out and they realized, you know, that they didn't know the ramifications of the letter they put out. But as a, as a chemist, we look at it different than a lawyer. A lawyer's got this, you know, this fuzzy part and we're just going, well, it's not really fuzzy if you really look at chemistry that they would have to do that. Did I answer the question? So now you have to figure out the definition of derivative. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the 26, December 2016 um, guideline for dietary nutritional supplements, that's the one, that's the document you want to look at. So they, they preloaded that document because it's botanical um, and dietary nutritional supplements. It's a guideline. So the FDA put out a guideline and if you follow that guideline, it's the runway to cannabis. What's the cliff note? So the cliff <laughs> that's so good. So the cliff note is 
you can't have a pure compound because then you have to register it with the government that if you're selling a pure compound, you can't do that. That's dominant number one. So what you do, though, is you can have a pure compound and you can use it in your QA, QC formulation so that you're making sure that you're always making a product that has all the ingredients you want. They don't mind if it's CBD and something else, you know, Delta-8 and something else, but it can't be just Delta-8. That's, that's illegal, not even through the guidelines. That's, that's a pure compound. No, no, you, so I, I, I'll, go to the, I'll go over here and then go back. Yeah. Well, he just, like, pushed my... ...be considered as part of the plant. So now, technically speaking, CBD, it's already decarboxylated from the plant. So it cannot be considered as a product from the plant. So Correct. technically speaking, we should... Same thing. You you decarboxylated it. Yeah. So technically speaking, you shouldn't be able to sell none of it because it's been already decarb and it's a it's a derivative, if you might say. It's a derivative. So I don't think they meant to write it poorly. They just didn't know what they were talking about. It's it's it, it probably at least fifty one shades of gray. If I'm sitting on kilograms of delta eight, would that could be degraded to CBN? You can oxidize it to CBN. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Technically speaking, then I have CBN, which it hasn't been ruled in the. Oh, very nice, very nice. You could be a lawyer too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just a chemist. Okay, but uh, you know, get his number in case you know that he's got <laughs> kilograms of this stuff. <laughs> Now that you know that he has kilograms of pre-CBN, <laughs> you don't actually have Delta-8, you just have some pre-CBN. Yeah. <laughs> you had the question. Yes. And look for 90 something or a period. 99. 99%. That's almost unheard of. Everything we've seen is 96. Yeah, it's like 99. So I think I had like two companies out there claiming that they're the only one, or like one claiming that he's like one of the only two ones that have 99% Delta A. Look at the COA. Because the, the, so it, the it wasn't. I mean, so you can get but. this 96, 97, 98, 99, whatever, that's still pretty versus something in the 80s like you're referring to, but now it's got, you know, I've seen COAs with CBN, CBC, CBG. So I'm okay with 95% with, with as long as I know what the other 5% is. Mm -hmm. I don't care. As long as I know what all the other gazintas are, I'm okay. It's when you don't know. It's when you don't know. When you have UNK everywhere. Yeah. Or it's not reported. Or it's not reported. Yes. Is, is Delta-8 considered, if there's some terpenes in there like that, is mm -hmm. that then considered um, legal because it's got terpenes on the side? Or should I make CBD with it? No, if you've got terpenes, that you're... you're okay. Because we have some Delta-8 cards that say 95% and then 5% terpenes. Yeah, 5% myrcene or you got limonene or the other ones. Yeah, so as long... Oh, that's what we try to <laughs> that means you're getting okay. all in? Because hmm? it's not as... Because it's not all Delta 8, if you have terpenes in it, it's all good? Right. It's better. Yes. That'll probably keep lying. Because now you, have, now you have an entourage effect. Is that all it takes is cannabinoids and terpenes for the entourage effect? Do you not need everything else in the yep. plant, like flavonoids? No, as long as there's something else. Uh, I'm going to have to send you back outside again. I don't. What's, what's, <laughs> You're as bad as me. I spent almost all my time outside the classroom. I have no idea how I actually got an education. That's why I don't have it. I, yeah, that's why I don't. And I always sat in the front row. Did you always sit in the front row? I was always so close to the teacher. It was so nice.
<laughs> she always liked me. But so that's what you have is, is as long as you know what the other components are. I don't care if it's Kapunka Lanka, as long as it's you know safe. What about the difference between So when you look at each one of those, that's a, a conjugate so I'll see if I can do it. A conjugated double bond somehow that along the way now you see as a spectrum because it has a, a color. So if I look at the um, CBD, I, I, on the Delta-8, I was looking at one of the things this morning and Delta-8 was supposed to have a bit of a color. And I'm thinking, okay, I, don't, I haven't studied that enough to know why it has a different color or whether it's some you know, nitrogen sitting over the side of it or something like that, but, but I don't know. Why, have you looked at anything on that? No, not why. Because I've had people say that it won't have a color, and I can tell immediately when I have a delta-8. This is what you do, is you take, you take your Clorox cleaner, and you just do a little spray on, on even one of your little pans, little pans, a pan that you're going to be cleaning or whatever, and it will, it will turn red. Because you're oxidizing it, and now you Can, you can do a, a base, you can do an acid, or you can oxidize it with O3. And if you just take your little Clorox, you'll see it. It'll turn red. It'll turn red immediately. I had a converter. I don't know how true it is. Or not. It told me that to, go, to get to a clear product, you've got to run it through a roots process. I don't <laughs> That's one way. So the... Um, <laughs> What happens with the bleach is that's what they're finding in the product, is that it has a vape and it has a leftover bleach in that, in that, and then you're, you're bringing a bleach into your lungs. So there is bleaching agents out there that we do as organic chemists and stuff like that, but, um, but that's one of the things that they saw in the, uh, over in Germany and some of the things they've seen when they've, when they've been looking at this. So the FDA has a forensic lab in Cincinnati and that's where they did all the cartridges and they put out a paper and all the different things so I'm gonna you know if I was to, to look into the to, to the future like the uh, um, Wizard of Oz ah, my pretty pretty then I would think that they would go back over to, to Cincinnati and run the same thing for those labs they have a whole lab that they've done all these papers on and that's a that's an open access paper so you can go get that that paper anything that's open access you're allowed to to go get, and I think it was an open access paper with the FDA and the methods out of the Cincinnati lab. It's their forensics lab, and they're going to run this stuff through. But I did see that. Yes, sir. Some of the Delta A products that I buy, like the flower on the front, it'll say like 88% Delta A, and then I get cartridges that are 95%. Why would flower be less? I don't understand how. You know, if you're making the delta eight from the flower, the flower is just delta eight is sprayed on the flower. It's sprayed on the flower. It's sprayed on the flower. I did not know that. It does. That's exactly what I tasted yesterday. It tastes sprayed on the flower. You can get. I had a friend of mine get really, really sick in Chicago. She and her her boyfriend took some and they they tried it and like three in the morning she was throwing up. So you can have different things that might be on that flower, but. What they're doing in Oregon a lot is they're taking the Delta-8, they're also taking the, uh, the um, THC and they, they, they take the hemp and then they spray Delta-9 on, on the flower. So where I live in Bakersfield, people are stealing the hemp, like, you know, stealing the hemp. And now they have police all around them and stuff and then they take it and they dry it and then they spray on the Delta-9 or they just sell it to the, to the kids, you know, just thinking that, I mean, it smells. I mean, it's terpenes. It's cannabis. Cannabis yeah, it's is definitely cannabis. Yeah, hemp so is cannabis. Got sick by the Delta 9, you no, I'm th I'm saying that they they put bad things in it and then they spray it on. Remember the Tylenol? We're old enough for the Tylenol scare. CBD isolate? Yeah. Yes. The best way to do it with the, uh, is with the isolate, because when you start off with a crude or anything else in there, 
Now you have A plus B plus D plus C, and now you're trying to make A, you know, C and D. That's not happening. You, you have all kinds of M&Ms in there. You've got red, green, blue, other things. This is one of my good friends, Jerry King. He's older than I am. There are not that many chemists older than me, but he, he is. <laughs> He's like 82 or so. But this is a great paper that he wrote, and he has another paper as far as looking at the entire uh, overall picture, but he's, uh, but he's a, an analytical chemist. Nothing wrong with that. I still like him. But if, you, <laughs> but if you go through the process, you can see every part along the way. But when you're going through this process, you can inadvertently make delta-8 by, by doing a bad process, even with CBD. You can make delta-9 really, really easy by, by cooking it too hot, by doing ethanol and then distilling it too hot. And I, I can certainly make, I've made a lot of Delta-8 just exploring the chemistry. I don't sell Delta-8, I don't do anything with the Delta-8, but I can certainly make it. And so this is from 1981, where they're figuring out it was in the trichomes. And then this is uh, uh, 2019, maybe even 2020, early 2020, and this is where they started to do the synthase. So in the early days of 81, they didn't know where, where the cannabinoids were. So then they figured out they were in the trichomes. And now, now you're looking at the fact of the flowering stage and finding out the synthases because that's the biosynthesis. And that's why they still haven't found, I don't, I've not found anything in the literature. I've been digging to find, you know, uh, Delta-8 in the synthase, much like you can't find the CBN. So when you're looking at that, what we were just talking about is this is the THCA getting rid of the CO2, so this one falls off, right, it goes away. When you do oxidative degradation, that's where I'm talking about peroxide or doing something else, this is CBN. And the difference between these two is all the double bonds are made onto this one now. Now you have all of the double lines. And this, this is, um, so CBG A, it looks, as I say, it looks like a wounded, it looks like a wounded um, uh, eagle. It's just, it's floppy. It's all over the place. I mean, there's not very, there's nothing really to it. And then you get to, then you get to CBD and it has that one ring around it and it has a little more structure to it. And then you have THC and it's got even more structure. And so you, 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 you have three rings now, where CBD you only have two rings and then CBN, these two molecules are flat, so it really is a flat molecule. It's not going anywhere. It likes to be where it is. It's very stable, and so it, it likes to be just fine. But this one still has, you know, it, has, it, it doesn't like to be here. It really does not like to have that double bond, so that's why you have to be careful with it. And then, this is just a pictorial. When you're doing purification, there's nothing called isolate in chemistry world, or we call them pure compounds. Um, this would be, you know, if you were to take your first compound and you take it all out, so maybe that's your ethanol, your first stage, and then you do a distillation, and then you do a purification. Each one of those stages, you see there's less gazentas in here. doesn't matter what they are. There's just less of them. And this is, this is one where I actually can make uh, Delta-8 onto this one. So if you look at this one, this is the remediation. So this is one where you take the chromatogram and you can see that there's a CBD and CBN, THC. There's a lot of different molecules in here and this is what it looks like. And this is a crude. out through what's called chromatography. So now I can separate out each one of these. I can separate the green from, the, from this blue, from this blue, and they go into individual buckets. And then you can continue and continue. It just, it just works all the time, works all the time, works all the time. It just keeps going round and round and round. You don't have to do anything with it. And this is what a big one looks like. This is a 20 centimeter. So this is the same thing, but this is a, a whole, this happens to be a thar but you, there's also PIC and there's also some other technology. So this is the column over here and it's called a, 
uh, dynamic axial compression. So what it actually does is it squeezes the whole compound so it's always the same. It's called a DAC column. And you take this system, and you, this is what it looks like crude, and then this is what it looks like because there's, no, there's a little bit of THC here. And then you get to this one, and there's nothing. So when they're doing that, that's the type of technology that's used when you're trying to get you know, pure delta-8. You're having to do something that allows you to get to the delta. This is using CO2 and 2% ethanol. So now you just have to get a little bit of the ethanol out of there. And that's how you make, that's how you make pure compounds in medicinal chemistry and other types. Supercritical. Yeah, supercritical. So on that one, it just goes round and round and round. It's, I just use a 98% CO2 and 2% ethanol. And then you just collect your tub every single day of a pure compound. But your capex is high. And that's, what the big, that's why it's going to be harder for individual people to do that. You're going to have to go to a, a large manufacturer. But at the same time, how do you go to a large manufacturer if you're not allowed to have CBG, and, I mean, Delta-8, and sell it? I don't know. How high percentage of Delta-9 have you seen being remediated with this? 0 0.03. No, but like started at what high percentage? Well, that was 9. It doesn't much matter. They're so far apart, it doesn't, right. does, really doesn't. Having to, it just re injects, re injects, re injects. Okay. They have a 60 centimeter one too, and that's a big. But I think that was my. Lots of, we have still, what time is it? 11.10. Oh, so I have five minutes? So I did suck up all the time. There has to be other questions. No questions? I hope that was helpful. So the other part that we're thinking about is, is how do you actually have a, an entire conference on something like that because it's, it's the other miners that are also there. So when you're going back through and you have a process in place where people are doing greater and greater purification, by the time they come to the end, they have something called mother liquor. People under, it, so mother liquor is a bad term for, for what we, we see. We, we call it the final residue or waste product. But those products, people have 55 barrels of this final distillation product. And those products are full of CBC and Delta-8 and Delta-9. It's just that they don't know what to do with them, because now how do you get rid of it all? One way you could do it is Clorox, but that can't be as much fun. So those are the things of the next ones as far as figuring out how to, how to get all this done. Was that of any value good enough? Or? All right. So. We'll have a video tape, I guess, and anyone, more questions or whatever you have? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your time.